Hello, Kaya Savas here. We're trying something a little different this time. Our annual best scores list has evolved from an article to a video as we count down the best scores of 2019. As always, we break it down into the top five scores of each visual medium. Video games, television, and film. Well, let's jump into it. Number 5, Call of Duty Modern Warfare. Sarah Schachner returns to the Call of Duty franchise with Modern Warfare, previously having scored Infinite Warfare. While the Call of Duty franchise definitely has built a formula for itself, the yearly game is always in need of a score that makes you want to gear up and kick some ass. The campaign this year deals with some heavy themes and doesn't shy away from difficult topics such as showing how war affects the innocent. And you'll confront those tough moments in the game. The score plays serious in the campaign, adding weight and intensity. In multiplayer, it's all about those kick-ass riffs, match start, and match end moments. Call of Duty players spend a good time waiting for matches to load, so that menu music better be on point. And Sarah always nails it. Number 4. Erica. Austin Wintory brings his signature sounds to this blending of live action and interactive gameplay. Erica follows in the footsteps of games like Heavy Rain and Until Dawn, but adding a live action element to it while still letting players carve their own path. Austin had the dizzying task of essentially writing the score to unfold in countless ways depending on which path the players took. The gothic and noir sensibilities of the score add atmosphere and emotion in large heaps. Tina Guo's solo cello performance adds a vibrant life to the score as well. Erica is a perfect example of how unique narrative storytelling through music is possible in gaming, something that couldn't be done in film or TV. Number 3. Gears 5. Ramin Javadi returns to the Gears of War franchise for Gears 5. The franchise has a rich musical history with composers such as Kevin Reipel, Steve Jablonski, and Jacob Shea coming before Ramin. Ramin scored Gears of War 4 and gets to continue his musical world in 5. Ramin brings a through line of emotion to the fifth installment, while still upping the intensity and scope of the third-person cover-based shooter. There is a surprising amount of emotion and humanity injected into this score, which makes Gear 5 stand out in unique ways from its predecessors. It may be the most mature game and score of the series so far. Number 2. Death Stranding While the overall execution of Death Stranding may fall flat for some, it's really Ludwig Forsell's score that brings Hideo Kojima's open-world sci-fi game to life. The score sets its own unique soundscape by feeling like Mass Effect that leans heavily on retro sense, but it's so much more than that. The score is an incredible journey. It might be the one thing that makes Death Stranding work as a narrative. The game is extremely divisive amongst fans, but you can feel how much heavy lifting the score is doing to make this experimental take on open-world gaming work. Number 1. Star Wars Jedi Fallen Order Gordy Hobb and Stephen Barton have given us a Star Wars game score that truly feels like the most well-rounded narrative and world-building experience we could have outside of John Williams. The video games of Star Wars have always showcased the most interesting ways other composers take on the musical universe that John Williams has built. Hobb and Barton are no strangers to games, and Hobb is no stranger to Star Wars having scored both Battlefront 1 and 2. However, here, with an original narrative that stars screen actors such as Cameron Monaghan and Forrest Whitaker, Fallen Order feels like the best Star Wars story outside the core trilogies that you could experience. The score has its own identity, and doesn't feel the need to homage Williams at every turn like some of the past games we've experienced. It's a rich and fully realized soundscape that immerses the player and pulls you into the narrative. Number 5. Servant Season 1. Servant is an extremely engaging and tension-filled show that debuted with the release of Apple TV+, and composer Trevor Gorekas' score is one of the most unnerving elements to the dark mystery that unfolds before you with each episode. The show can be frustrating with its obvious illogical plot holes, but as you learn more, it all starts making sense. The score is supremely successful, creating sounds that keep you unsettled and uncomfortable. It's a show that gently irritates your senses, but in the best way possible. The score masterfully pulls you into this family's world and the bizarre events that unfold. With almost all of the season taking place inside the townhome, 
It's the score that succeeds in making it feel like this mystery is progressing and intensifying. Strings, ticks, atmospheric drones, piano, and synth textures all add to the world of Servant. It's an excellent exercise in tension building, and a score unlike anything on TV right now. Number 4. The Man in the High Castle, Season 4. Dominic Lewis wraps up his masterful arc across all four seasons of The Man in the High Castle. A revisionist historical drama based on the novel by Philip K. Dick is a show that examines what happens if the Axis powers won World War II. Season 4 is the final season, and at this point, the series is very deep into a plot of science fiction. Lewis's score has always been the staple of the series, bringing to life the immense production design and pulling the audience into the story no matter how bizarre the twists and turns come. A big thing that the score does is infuse emotion into every scene. Lewis demonstrates an ability to craft character arcs as well as showcase his ability to build tension and drama. The Man in the High Castle thankfully had Lewis from season one all the way through the end, and he finishes this cult favorite series on an extremely high note. Number three, Lost in Space, season two. Right at the end of 2019, we were treated to the release of season two of Lost in Space. When it comes to the score, Christopher Leonard brings his A-game with some of the best writing that he's done in his career. This is a show that was made for him, and you can feel the love and inspiration behind every note. Season 1 was a triumphant space adventure, and Season 2 continues that. The score is able to inject just the right amount of melancholy into the tone to make the story have emotional weight. And when Leonard lets his theme soar, it's truly something that sends chills through your body. Season 2 of Lost in Space is truly a spectacular, old-school, orchestral, sci-fi adventure in the best ways possible. Number 2, The Mandalorian, Season 1. Ludwig Göransson steps into the first live-action Star Wars series and delivers one hell of an amazing soundscape for us to get lost in. The series returns Star Wars to its western roots, and Göransson spent a ton of time experimenting with sounds and textures that ultimately led him to a score that wasn't afraid to leave John Williams in the rearview mirror. Following the arc of The Mandalorian and The Child is equal parts thrilling and emotionally engaging, feeling like a true space western adventure. The Mandalorian's main theme is also something that sticks with you long after you're done watching. Bronson is proving himself to be a builder of worlds rather than someone following the trends, and The Mandalorian is an example of that. Number 1. His Dark Materials Season 1 Born Valve's score to His Dark Materials is truly one of the richest and most immersive scores on television right now. An attempt to adapt Philip Pullman's fantasy novels were made back with The Golden Compass, while television seems to fit the sprawling and deep narrative much better. Valve's score is boldly thematic and emotional, doing an amazing job at both building character arcs and keeping the narrative shape intact for the audience. The score has moments of pure awe, moments of darkness, and moments of reflection. It really shapes a story that makes it relatable on an emotional level, which is key for pulling the audience in and taking them along for the ride. His Dark Materials is a tremendous season one debut for a show as well, where it can be extremely difficult finding the foundation for a series meant to continue for long-form storytelling. Number 5. Joker Hildur Gudnadotter had the rare opportunity to be brought onto the project very early. Director Todd Phillips had Hildur write music that would be played on set and then fed into Joaquin Phoenix's ear during scenes to shape his performance, the most notable one being the bathroom dance. The end result is a deeply dark and bellowing score that plunges you into darkness. The score is bleak, it's disturbing, and it's one of the most effective character-building scores in recent memory. The score is designed to take us through a transformation, a metamorphosis, but the end result is not a beautiful butterfly. Joker is haunting, it's effective, and it works on a deeply emotional and psychological level, allowing you to feel the pain and suffering of Arthur Fleck's bleak existence. Number 4. Jojo Rabbit 
Michael Giacchino teaming up with Taika Waititi seemed like it should have happened a long time ago. Giacchino was a perfect fit for this beautiful little film that is able to handle some tough subject matter. The score starts with a Hitler Youth March that becomes JoJo's theme. It paints a whimsical and innocent picture of what we know to be a terrible time in history. The film plays as a comedic satire for the first act, but slowly reveals itself to be a very deep and emotional commentary on how hate in this world is taught and learned. There is a significant tonal shift in the film, and Giacchino handles it beautifully. What makes the score work is that it's all from Jojo's point of view. We are there from his eager spirit of the beginning, through his realization, and we are there for the pain and sorrow that leads to his awakening. When Giacchino hits you with those simple piano notes and delicate strings, it's impossible not to have tears well up in your eyes. Jojo Rabbit is a beautiful film and score, and brings Giacchino back from the world of Marvel to do what he truly does best. Number 3, 1917. Sam Mendes decided to make 1917 when he was frustrated and not finding any scripts out there that he liked. So he rallied his usual team of collaborators together to make an extremely simple, yet emotionally heavy war film that follows two soldiers on a mission to deliver a letter that would prevent 1,600 men from walking into a trap. The simple point A to B journey is masterfully told by crafting the film as one continuous take. A series of immensely long takes were stitched together, similar to Birdman, to have the film unfold in real time without ever cutting. Thomas Newman's score is such an integral part to the structure as well, coming in at the perfect moments to either increase tension or provide an emotional release. The score is not something you'd typically expect from Newman and Mendes, as both of them push themselves into new territory. The result is stunning and masterful. Number 2. How to Train Your Dragon – The Hidden World Over the course of a decade, writer-director Dean DeBlois has given us a beautiful story about growing up, overcoming prejudice, showing warmth, and realizing that love and compassion is the answer over war and hate. The core of this trilogy has been John Powell's stunning scores, which culminate in The Hidden World. The Hidden World is technically a sequel score, but it still feels brand new. The old themes are there, but it's the new ones that tell a more mature and emotionally complex story. The film is all about closure, moving on, and cherishing those in our lives that made the journey worth taking. It also lets us know that nothing is forever. Things change, and life can take us on different paths. Powell's score echoes all of this, and ends in the most beautiful reprisals of some of the themes that started the journey. Number 1. A Hidden Life Terrence Malick is one of those filmmakers that operates in a genre of his own. He also rarely works with the same composer, opting to cast a composer much like an actor to fit the ideas he's trying to explore in any one particular film. And Malick typically is known for having a composer right away from picture then moving the music around as he blends it with classical pieces in the soundscape. For A Hidden Life, Malik explored a true story based on a real human being who ended up being executed for being a conscientious objector. Franz Jägerstadter was an Austrian farmer who refused to fight for the Nazis in World War II. He was imprisoned and executed. James Newton Howard's score works on such an emotional level here, painting the life of Franz and how his simple farm life with his family almost exists like a dream. Malick's films typically explore the ideas of nature versus grace, and a hidden life is no different. For anyone who has ever contemplated why life exists, this film will have deeply profound effects. The music paints the beauty of life, only for us to see the life drained away from it. Howard's score goes through a journey, a change. We feel the light flickering away at certain points, but it ends on a somewhat hopeful note, which all of Malick's films tend to do. They aren't the happy fairy tale endings of most films, but there is hope in the darkness. The final line of the film, spoken in narration by Franz's surviving wife, a time will come when we'll know what all this is for, why there's all this suffering, and there'll be no mysteries. We'll know why we live. James Newton Howard's score is an achingly beautiful meditation on life and love, on happiness, but also pain and suffering. It's the most human story. It speaks to anyone who's ever wondered for even a second why all this exists. And that's the power of filmmaking. This is why we tell stories. And there you have it. Thank you very much for joining us on another reflection of the year's best scores. Did your favorite scores make our list? If not, be sure to comment letting us know your top five scores of 2019. What spoke to you emotionally? What films resonated with you? For Film Music Media, this is Kaya Savas. Thanks for watching.